Disclaimer, the following will contain spoilers for the game 13 Sentinel Seiki Stream. If you're not into that, then click out. If you're into that, then welcome back to another episode of 13 Sentinel Seiki Stream Character Profiles. Now, I highly encourage you to play the game yourself or watch a playthrough and try to come to your conclusions before watching this. Because it's more fun that way. Anyway, onward with the episode. On today's segment, we'll be talking about our favorite little brother slash assassin, kind of, Ace Sekigahara. As with my previous video, we'll be following this in a chronological timeline. So based on the timeline of 13 Sentinels, we'll first be discussing about the Ace Sekigahara of 2188. So, the Ace Sekigahara of 2188 was contracted by Renya Goto to assassinate Chihiro Morimura because he wanted to hide his wrongdoings when he bought uh, Newman Incorporated as well as used the Interstellar Development Project as a way to disguise a huge transfer of funds to a private account of his. The thing to note of is A was actually contracted to kill Morimura prior to the infection that wiped out humanity in 2188. So, based on conjecture, about either a few days or a few months before, the Ace Sekigahara of 2188 was professional to a fault, to such a degree that he would always research his targets and his contractors first before accepting any mission. However, there was also one interesting detail about A that is lesser known. The very fact that he seems to be a justice nut, Along the lines of Kiritsugu Emiya, who only did dirty jobs when it involved getting rid of problematic individuals as a whole. There is no data on the first loop's uh, Eiseki Gahara, or should I say the loop that Juro and Chihiro came from. So we're skipping right to the second loop, A. Eh? He was an unfortunate victim of uh, Prisoner 426's rampage, and attempt to escape the Eternal Cage. Meaning he was one of the confirmed deaths seen in uh, Juro's flashback dream. A Sekigahara of the third loop resided in Sector 2, which simulated the time, or should I say, the years of 2049 to 2069. The kaiju invaded approximately about around 2064 to 2065. A was one of the Sentinel pilots of 2064 who reacted to the battle. Alongside Juro, Izumi, and Ryoko Shinonome, they could be considered the very first defense against the Kaiju in the entirety of the third loop. However, one must note that Eiseki Gahara never trusted Ida Tetsuya. Even prior to his memory loss, Ida desperately tried to manipulate Eiseki Gahara to become his pawn against Chihiro's plans because, as we all know, Ida wanted the defense to fail. He wanted a reset so that he could get back his Tomi, as he likes to put it. Eiseki Gahara held a great deep distrust of Ida Tetsuya even before the invasion of the Kaiju. This was seen in one of the scenes in Shinonome's path when Shinonome volunteered quote unquote to pilot the Sentinel out of her desperation to impress Ida and made him f and make him fall in love with her. Eiseki Gahara decided to also help because he was afraid of what would be done to Ryoko and wanted to protect her as he viewed her as his big sister figure in life due to the fact that his parents were never around. Yeah, his parents were never around. And uh, let's disregard the fact that in the first place, every other character in 13, Sen in 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim outside of the 15 selected pilots are actually AI constructs created by... Sector Zero to act as an interactive program so that they would have a form of communication and learning. But we'll disregard that. That's for another video. Uh, I kind of rambled on a bit on that. Anyway, back to Eiseki Gahara. Eiseki Gahara ho also had a deep and good friendship with the Keitaro Miyura of the second loop, who got turned into an AI that piloted one of the Sentinels. An interesting thing to note is that uh, Eiseki Gahara, at some point in time, was a double agent for both Chihiro and Ida Tetsuya. This was during the period of time when he still couldn't, um, well, decide who to trust more. Even though he hated Ida, he also wanted to make sure that he could trust Chihiro. 
And it could perhaps be also something that he inherited from his uh, 2188 original self, a sense of distrust for Chihiro Morimura. Anyway, that's all conjecture. Let's go back to the truth and the hard facts. After Chihiro told A all about what actually was happening, yes, A. Sekigahara was one of the few people who actually understood completely the entirety of the simulation and the program. Ida had lied to A, and that's why A decided to, well, put his lot with Chihiro's plan. He decided to completely trust Chihiro. Unfortunately, he also had the very, very bad luck of being close to Ryoko Shinonomi. As we all know from the previous video about Shinonomi, her desperate desire to prove her love for Ida was correct led her to infecting a Sekigahara Sentinel with the virus that Ida created to cripple all the Sentinels first, which was a huge problem because that led to Shinonomi believing that e that uh, A was the source of the infection even though she was the actual source. Both of them would later lose all almost all of their memories. However, A Sekigahara was smart enough to have a backup created. He, s he actively sought out Tsukasa Okino of the third loop so that he could have his memories downloaded into nano machines so that in such a case where he to lose all his memories he would re-download himself into his body or should i say into his nano machine so that he would regain all the knowledge and experience and memories that he lost prior to his memory loss Eiseki Gahara had met a majority of the pilot candidates among the 15 by usually by sheer chance, such as with the case of Iori Fuyusaka, or completely purposely, like with what I stated with Sokasa Okino when he had his memories converted to digital data into his nanomachines. The reason why A. Sekigahara's memory loss wasn't as severe or as, well, or as fast as Shinonomi's was because he by happenstance met Prisoner number 426, who at the time was using the Tomi Kisaragi android that he hijacked from Hida Tetsuya's experiments. Tomi Kisaragi, or should I say prisoner number 426, helped A. Sekigahara escape from a bunch of androids and also offered him a deal that in exchange for creating <coughs> a medicine, namely the pills that uh, you see him and Ryoko using, so that it would stop the loss of memory a bit temporarily he still lost all his memories eventually however the pills at the very least kept him going long enough so that he could prepare lots of stuff beforehand so the deal was in exchange for the pills he would help uh prisoner number 426 travel to sector 4 because well 426 had no access to the shifter because it required the biological component data or should I say the biological DNA of one of the fitting selected pilots and as he was no longer possessing a biological body he needed a, someone else's DNA to access and use the shifter's teleportation functions. A. Sekigahara is also confirmed to be very meticulous and very good at planning as when his memory loss was imminent he left a few clues to himself so that he would know to distrust Ida and to trust Chihiro. Part of them being several scattered logs that we only get to see glimpses of on his bike and on BJ. He also had the foresight to embed a reminder into one of the logs so that he would so that he would realize that he could regain all his memories just by searching out Tsukasa Okino for the well, how do I put this? Retransplant of his memories, I suppose, is the only accurate way to call it. Initially, Eiseki Gahara had lost all hope for this to being salvaged, to such a degree that he even offered Iori Fuyusaka a way out of the simulation. She rejected it, and, well, she would then go on to go be the first pilot inside the Sentinel to fight against the Kaiju invasion. When Eiseki Gahara saw all of the pilots gathered, he actually he actually showed interest because he was impressed by number 426 having such uh, foresight in his planning 
So he decided might as well throw his lot in with this insane last ditch effort. So that he would at least go without regrets. And that's when Ace Kigahara joined the fray to help defend Sector 2, 1985, from the Kaiju. Ace Kigahara would then go on to have a happy ending with Iori Fuyosaka. The two of them now being together as husband and wife. Uh, we, it is unknown if they have children. However, A didn't bother coming back into the simulation unlike the rest of the 14 other pilots. Because of the fact that he held no attachments for anyone inside. Unlike Iori, Tomi, Natsuno, Juro, all of them had some form of attachment to someone inside the simulation, even if they were just AI constructs. Eiseki Gahara had none, because the only person he was attached to was Ryoko Shinonomi, and she was actually one of the pilots, so literally there was no reason for him to go back inside the simulation. And that concludes... Our character profile, our character files, on Eiseki Gahara, next time, or should I say on the next episode, we'll be discussing someone quite surprising. It's going to be Tomi Kisaragi. Because, I feel like it. And also, it's as a lead up to Ida Tetsuya, who will be right after Tomi. So, if you're still watching, thank you. Please consider leaving a like, a comment. And if you want to subscribe, it's your choice. I don't mind either way. However, I would greatly appreciate likes and comments so that I would know what to improve on, if I'm doing decently, or if there's anything that should be improved on. Anyway, that's long enough. Thank you very much for watching, or should I say, listening to a uh, weeb like me ramble on about a topic that I'm pretty much obsessed with right now. So, thank you very much and bye!